Um, all right, let's get to it. And uh, let me pop up uh, the odds here to see how it are. Because look, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give you a reason for my strategy. And I, and of course we're gonna go over one and dones. Um, now I can't take, if I wanted to, and I'm not sure, maybe I would, I'm not sure. Because again, Xander Schauffele, uh we don't know about whether or not mentally he's gonna be able to win a big event this year. So you might have a decision to make whether or not, mm -hmm. you know, you think this is a week to take them because I'm going to tell you right now, if I, I, I don't have them because I used them up already, but I'm telling you right now, if I did have them, I would seriously consider taking him uh, mm -hmm. to get a W on board. Um, he is right now at seven to one. Uh, let's see if I can I'll pop it up right here. So everybody can see it. There it is seven to one. There's Safra and all, all the other favorites there. Okay. Um, but here, okay, this is the reason why I did put him on my picks this week. I did some research on Shafle. He only made one appearance here. That was 2022. He finished 12th. We know how hot he is. There's there's nobody like uh, the, 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 the player closest to Scheffler right now without winning is Shafle regarding yep. how well he's playing. Five yep. top 10s and seven this year, three top fives, and of course the runner up uh, last week. Okay. Six of Xander Schauffele's seven uh, seven wins, and this includes the Olympic win. So six of his seven uh, professional wins were were made either on his first or second appearance. Hmm, how, interesting. How how crazy is that? Yeah. Now maybe that's why he lost players because that was the sixth <laughs> appearance. So that is very interesting. That he's a guy that can come to a golf course. First time, second time, win, and he's done it just about every time. That it just I think Travelers might have been the only uh, event that he won that he was at maybe his fifth appearance or something like that. Everything else that he's won was a first or second appearance. So mm -hmm. that in part with the fact that I do believe normally I would say you know what because I am I'm skipping all the other favorites. Normally I'd be like I'm I'm, I'm skipping them all. And yeah, he's too, way too low. He's seven to one. Why am I going to take him? He hasn't won since 2022, but I, I that and also the fact that I have to believe that it's now eating him. I got to win. I got to get a win. I got to get this, this whatever this is, off. And, and I got some big events coming up. I got the Masters, and I got the big event season coming with the majors. I got to win before I get to those events. I got to get this, this winning feeling going again. So mm -hmm. I think it is important for him. Unlike maybe some of these other players that are just kind of third in a row, maybe they're resting, maybe they're preparing for the Masters. I do think that he's going to be dialed in this week. Yeah, you know, it, it's a it, there's some good points you make. I'm I'm not going to get to Xander at seven to one. I do have him still available for one and done, and I honestly was not considering him because just generally how I play one and done is I want to use these high end players in fields with um, or in tournaments with the, the bigger prize pools. Um, but I don't know. I think I think Xander's on my list to consider now because he is seven to one, and he's not going to be seven to one for any other tournament he plays this year. It's probably is his best, you know, percentage chance to win the tournament. And yeah, it's a lower prize pool, but if he, and I also don't think he's going to be very popular in one and done either. True. Uh, I think there'll be at least a couple players that are more popular. So uh, yeah, it's good good points you make, and I am now going to consider using Xander in one and done. Uh, and then because if you, here's the interesting thing, you have. Uh, Paul Casey winning and then defending with a win. Mm -hmm. Then you have Sam Burns yep. winning and defending with a win. So Taylor Moore has got pressure on him this week because <laughs> he won last year. He's trying to be the, the third straight uh, champion of this event that has successfully defended the title. Um, but you take a look at the other players on the field, and, and one of them is Burns. He is the second go at it, uh, for second odds at 12 to 1. But it, it's just hard to win three out of four. I will say this, that if you are with Burns, if you are thinking about one and done and you have them, this is a yeah. pretty good place to do it. I know you want him to win because the money's low. And even if he finishes in the top five, which you, which you would think you probably had a good chance to do it at this golf course, you're still not making a lot of money. So that's the thing you have to weigh against. So mm -hmm. I, I like if I had already, you know, if I'm in a one and done contest and I've already got like two or three wins and I'm yes. like at near the top, I'm probably taking Sam Burns. I'm going to do the, the easy way out 
and just because yeah. again I, anything can happen at this event but why not just go with sam burns because nobody has the resume at this golf course that sam burns does right yeah i'm with you i think burns is is the choice for front runners and one and dones at this point i think he feels like you know one of the safer plays um i i and I, I am considering Burns. He's one of the two guys that kind of came into this considering I'm going to add Xander to the list now, but um, I'm considering Burns because I, 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 you know, he's a good player. He's not a great player. So I like him at this level of event. Plus I like Sam Burns in Florida and this is our last event in Florida for the year. So if you want to use him in Florida, this is your, your last chance. He, he is going to be popular though. He, he might be the most popular one and done play this week. Yeah, that's true. Matter of fact, if uh, we take a look, the only thing that I would, I'm concerned about is he is trending in the wrong direction. And he started that on Sunday at Bay Hill <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when he, what would he have, what do you have, like a 77 or something like that? When he was yeah. in contention, everything was going great, and he just completely uh, flopped, and he hasn't really gotten his game back since. So let me just quickly take a look. So he, he won last in 2022. So I want to see what his trend line was coming in. Um, it was okay. He had a 26th at Players and a 9th at Bay Hill. Uh, and in 2021, uh, the first time he won, uh, yeah, he had three missed cuts and then a 39th at RBC Heritage. Then he had the win. So um, mm -hmm. he wasn't trending backwards like he is right now. But uh, look, the fact is, he had a really class player. Like you said, it's a Florida course for him. And He's just awesome on the course. So, yeah, right. no, I, I mean, you're right about the trends. His his um, ball striking numbers, the you know off the tee and approach, really has not been great the last two weeks. So that's that's concerning. Yeah, with the water, no question. And then you have Justin Thomas at 14 and Spieth at 16. And um, uh, where are we? So Thomas, uh, yeah, he this Jan actually said that uh, when she was out there yesterday, she had she was playing yesterday on the course um there was some uh, i forget what she was there for but anyway uh she said she saw jt there she was he was practicing which is unusual on a monday uh she mm -hmm. he had his golf instructor out there so uh look he missed the cut so he had the extra time and he's definitely using it uh, we've talked about this jt's never won an event on his third consecutive week of action so keep that in mind and he's missed two of his last three cuts so all of a sudden that hot start he's gotten off to is in jeopardy. This is a big event for him. If he misses yeah. the cut this week, that's bad. Now, all of a sudden, he's kind of back where he was last year. So he really needs a good top 10 showing this week. Yeah, do, do not take my advice when it comes to Justin Thomas because I've been invested in him twice so far this year, and it's the two weeks he missed the cut at Genesis and the players. Um, so he's he's killing me. Um, I know that feeling. And I could I could see myself getting back on him for the Masters. Honestly, I've bet him at the Masters a lot. I, I still think it's a tournament he'll win eventually. Um, now I will say last week was super frustrating because through two rounds, you know, when he missed the cut, he was I think it like he was sixth in the field in strokes gain approach through two rounds. So the irons were awesome. The driver was not good enough. The putting was horrible, which you know has been an issue for Thomas for a while now. So I I, I still don't think he's far off. Again, the irons were awesome last week um so I, I still think he's he's close i would not be shocked if he won this week as of course he's played well at in the past um but yeah he's, he's not he, he's not for me as a bat this week at that number i do think if you if you still have him in one and done he's worth considering i think yeah. he'll probably be pretty low owned but just because he's coming off the miscut yeah because again he actually has done pretty well here compared to yeah. other players in his last yeah. three years three top 15s and a third place finish. So that's pretty good. Five top 20s in his career out of six. So that's a good run for JT. He seems to like the golf course. Jordan, who's now 16 to one, by the way. Uh, Jordan's kind of like the same way. I don't know what's going on with Jordan right now. Um, you know, he got off to a good start. It looked like this could be a good, good year for him. And it's all falling apart. Uh, just one top 10 in his last five. Missed the cut last week. Uh, just like JT, though, he's five top, ten, five top 20s out of six. So there's been a good golf course for him. He won it back in 2015. He was third last year. But I just don't like the way he's playing right now. Nope, me either. And I know he played well here last year. It just doesn't seem like the type of course he would be good at. I don't trust his 
driving accuracy on, on such a tight tree line course like this. So definitely not, not, not a speed week for me. Okay, we're going to now scroll down here with the odds where we pick up. There you've got Harmon uh, through Straka. So let me see. Is there anybody else? Yeah, well, that's a good way to uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll go through this list now. Yeah, Harmon – I, I think this is a good week to take Harmon because uh, I, I can make excuses for the other contenders that are in his uh, zone, even Burns and JT, because he is trending beautifully coming off the runner-up. Uh, I even um, uh, thought last week he was a pretty decent play for his odds. Uh, three top 25s out of nine is nothing special, but that's par for the course here. Um, yeah. One top five in his career, but... He's missed the cut six times in nine appearances. So you do – that's the thing that keeps me from going, yeah, you know what? Maybe he's a good one-and-done option this week. Harmon showed by winning the Open Championship last year that he actually could be a sneaky sleeper in a major for one-and-done. So I, I'm definitely holding on to Harmon for something this year. Okay. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to – I'm gonna especially if he plays like this – um, but this week, yeah, I, I just, uh, that's, uh, I, I, look at 20 to one, which he is right now. I don't think he's a bad idea if you want to throw some yeah. money on him because I'm going to, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would uh, do one and done though. I think there are better options for him down the line. So Harmon's the guy I'm leaning towards actually for one and done this week. Um, I, I, d I don't think I would get to him in a major. I mean, you make a he obviously won one last year, so he's not a bad play in these majors. I think I'll end up using, you know, just guys higher in the world rankings in majors. The, the course history is scary here, although you said, you know, a few minutes ago that course history doesn't matter a no, whole it doesn't. lot here. Um, and I, I, I just want to ride the hot form with Harmon. Sure. You know, it, even if you look at when he won the Open last year, I mean, it didn't come out of nowhere. He had played three excellent tournaments in a row before that win. So, you know, I think he is kind of a form player. Good course for him, you know, not the longest course, more of an accuracy type course. That's the type of player he is. Um, you know, le last week, Harmon gained, gained nine strokes on approach, second best strokes gained approach tournament of his entire career. Wow. So this this guy this guy is hot. Um, I'm just going to, I think, hope he rides the form for one more week. And he, he's who I'm leaning towards for one and done. But again, I, I, you know, Burns and, and Xander are also considerations for me. Well, the you answered it right there. See, for me, I, I'm I want to hold him for a big one because that's what I'm thinking I might be able to because because if you take him for a big one, chances are and you win that week, you're going to be in good position because not many other people are going to take him in a yes. big one. But yep. if, like you said, if you're not planning on doing that, then yeah, this is a great week to take him. One one and done. Yeah. Yeah, and I do think Harmon will be pretty popular this week for one and done. I don't think he's going to you know fly under the radar. Um, but I'm okay, I'm okay with that. That's true. Uh, coming off, uh, you, know, you know, everybody was glued into what happened last week, they're, right. they're just seeing how hot he is. And, uh, yeah, and they remember he won the Open Championship, and it's a weaker field. So I can definitely see this being a good week um, as far as, well, a week uh, where he's going to be popular at one and done. Uh, Cam Young, uh, Finau, and M. Um, I, I don't I don't like any of these guys this week. Still don't like the way yeah. Finau's going. Just one top five uh, since the Mexico win. I keep saying that uh, because, uh, you know, and it's interesting because he's missed a cut here three times and mm -hmm. for a combined 19 over par. He made the cut once. He finished fifth, 11 under par. That's mm -hmm. Innisbrook. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. M, no top 15s in his last eight. He did finish fourth here in 2019, 29th and 21. So that's that's good course uh, history, but he is not on his game right now. And uh, and then lastly, Young. I just don't see this being a good course for Young at all. Um, so I just I can't. And it's trending in the wrong direction. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on Cam Young because like his distance off the tee is kind of negated here. He did play really well. It was either last year or two years ago at Harbor Town. Which again, I think is a, a similar course to this, and that it's you know shorter positional. So like, not that Cam Young can't play well here. Again, we've talked about Cam Young, his inability to to win these tournaments when he's at a number. Like, I'd rather bet Cam Young at fifty to one at a major or a signature event, you know, than bet him at you know twenty twenty two to one in a weaker field. It's just I don't trust his ability to close at this point. Um, Sung Jae and Finau were guys I briefly considered 
as bets. Song Jae was bad for really the first what two months of the season up until the Honda the Honda or the the, the Cognizant. Um, the last two weeks though, he's kind of started to turn around. You know, 18th at API, 31st at players. The ball striking numbers have been better. So I do think Sung Jae is figuring something out. Um, not sure he's quite there yet, ready to win. Finau's ball striking has been awesome all year. We, we've talked about it. He made some changes with the putter last week and actually gained 1.3 strokes putting at the players. So I don't know. Maybe if he's figured something out and the ball striking stays hot. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, I mean, among among those three, Finau would be the, the, my favorite bet of them. Um, but, I, but I just didn't quite get there this week. All right. Uh, next up, we have Minwoo Lee at 30. Taylor Hadwin, the two Canadians, at 35-1. to 1. Bradley and Straka at 35 to 1. So out of that group, uh, big surprise, Taylor would be the way that I would go. Um, because again, he's, he's, he's playing better than he ever has. Uh, yep. uh, he was in contention, as you mentioned, until uh, sat, until uh, third round he imploded. But um, the fact that he was there after a couple of rounds is another positive sign. Uh, three top 25s out of eight. Tenth last year was his best showing at this golf uh, on this golf course. Um, Minwoo Lee's never played here, and he's trending the wrong way, so um, I don't really like that. Uh, meanwhile, Bradley, also, his game seems to be off. Uh, he mm-hmm. hasn't looked good lately, and um, he was runner-up here in 2021, but he's missed four right. out of seven cuts, and uh, the last one being Hadwin, who does have three top 15s and a win. He won in 2017 here, um, but he's also missed four out of eight cuts overall. Uh, excuse me, he's missed, uh, yeah, four out of eight cuts overall, including last year. But uh, he has won, and, and that does mean something. Um, and in his last five events, though, he just hasn't played all that well. He does have a top five, but other than that, uh, his game is also off. Yeah, Minwoo, I would, I would cross off my list. I don't like him on a course like this that, that's so tight. Um the, the other three, um, I wouldn't fault you for betting. I think there's arguments for all of them. I think they're all kind of fairly priced. Like again, I think Nick Taylor is finally priced where he should be at 35 to one. You know, with with Keegan Bradley and with Adam Hadman, that's kind of where he belongs. Um, so I, Ke- Keegan Keegan, I looked at because he does have the, you know, some some spike performances at this course. Um, but like you said, just not not playing quite well enough. I don't think he, he's ready to win at this point. And by the way, Straka is trending in the right direction. But he's just played here once, um, which actually, uh, trend-wise, is a good thing. Uh, that was 46th in 2019. Okay, now we're going to go to the next group. Uh, let's uh, move on down. Um, matter of fact, while I'm doing this, let's see here. Let me get this set up here, too. Where am I? Uh, there they are, the odds. Okay. Uh, so let me come back to... There they are. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I'm at Mitchell, uh, Gim, Bazudenhut. Uh, let's stop there uh, because uh, my, my man over here, as, as you know, because we've already shown you the picks, uh, my man uh, has uh, all three of these players at 40 to 1. And uh, yeah, Bazudenhut is not down to 40, but we have him at 45. So, But they're all at 40. And I was seriously considering... Matter of fact, I definitely like Gim, um, and I, w- I might have taken Bazunut as well. So I like both of those picks. Uh, I want. Let's start. And by the way, this is another reference towards a uh, former U.S. Uh, number one amateur, uh, which Doug Gim uh, has been. Uh, you, you've mentioned him before. You took him, I think, once or twice last year, I believe. Yep. And he is now definitely. He better be on your radar now, um, because he's. He's down to 40 to one. He started off at 60 to one. It's showing you right there that uh, people are taking notice in his yeah. last five events. They're all top twenties. That is a serious run uh, for a young player like Gim. He was 27th last year. So he did make one out of two cuts and he's got that perfect like resume for this golf course. You know, he's never won. You know, he doesn't have any great history here. Decent history, <laughs> nothing great. You know, he's 118th in the world. And more importantly, he's red hot. So I, I think he's a great pick this week. Yeah, I actually got him at 80 to 1 first thing Monday morning. So I can't say I, I love seeing him, you know, down to 40 now. But I, I again, like you said, I, 
I he's he's my favorite bet of the week. Just he's he's playing by far the best golf of his career. Like you said, the five straight top 16s. He is second in this field in strokes gain total over the last three months. Um, yeah, he, and he's he's doing it with the ball striking. Like he has gained off the tee in five straight. He has gained on approach in five straight. And even the putting has been good. And that's generally been the problem with Doug, Doug Gammons. He's not a great putter, but he has been – um, especially these last few weeks, you know, on these Florida courses, which I like. Um, so I, he, he's he's ready to win. Um, and I think, again, 40 to 1 is, is still good enough. Or even if I hadn't bet it at 80, I'd still pull the trigger on game at 40 to 1. Yeah, that's awesome. If you uh, if you hit him this week with that 80. Matter of fact, um, I made uh, two moves this week on my fantasy team. I almost picked him up. Yep. And he's 118th in the world. But that's how confident I am in this run, that it's just not a run, that this could be the beginning of the fact that, you know, we're going to probably all second guess the fact that we didn't pick him up on our fantasy team uh, before. So, Gim, um, good play this week. And then you have Bazoon Hoot, um, yep. who, even though he only played here once, he was two under par uh, in 2022. So that's good. Um, but he's trending in the right direction, so we like that. He was a very solid 13th at players last week. Yeah, 13th at players gaining seven strokes on approach, which I'm looking right now. That's his best strokes gain approach tournament ever, at least on the PGA Tour. Um, he is, Zadenho is um, fifth in this field in strokes gain total over the last three months, so he's just playing good golf. I know we talked about the new filter on Fantasy National last week looking at just Florida courses. If you look at that for this field this week, he is 17th best in this field. So we've done well in Florida. Um, had the, you know, air quotes win already at yeah. Amex where we got the first place. Well, that's it. That, that's win. cash check. That's cash in the check. <laughs> cash, yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think he's uh, a candidate to actually pick up a real win this yeah. week. And then Mitchell, uh, your other pick, uh, Mitchell has yep. played here twice. 11th in 2017 is his best performance. Um, didn't play as well last week, but I w- was coming into players uh, on a nice little run to start the season. So why do you like yeah. him this week? Yeah, Mitchell lost six strokes putting last week at players. That that was his problem. Um, the ball striking has just been super consistent all season. He has – Mitchell has gained strokes off the tee every single tournament he's played this season. He's gained strokes on approach in four straight, five of the last six. His only PGA Tour win came at Honda, you know, another Florida course. So I kind of like that. Um, I, I just think forty to one's a pretty good number for for Keith Mitchell in this field. All right, and now we're going to move on to the next uh, wave, and there they are, from Rye to the defending champ Taylor Moore. Okay, so uh, out of this group, um, we have some picks. Uh, we, we both uh, have some players on board. So I'm I, I'm going to start off first of all. Um, with my pick in this group, and that is my second pick overall behind Xander Schauffele. So he's kind of like, he would have been my top pick if I didn't go with, with Schauffele, and that is uh, Maverick McNeely. So uh, McNeely is sitting there still at 55-1. to 1. Uh, I liked him a few weeks ago, still like him. I almost picked him up on my fantasy team a few times this year. So, uh, But I also think he fits the profile. He's 99th in the world. He's never won a PJ Tour event. He played here mm-hmm. just once, 36th last year. Uh, and then he's made six straight cuts, three top 15s out of four, two top 10s, including a very solid ninth last week at the players. And McNeely just seems to be one of these uh, one of these players who is, is better at the tougher golf courses. You know, we see him in these major events. He's mm-hmm. popped up before. And now, you know, we're seeing that again uh, with uh, his performance last week. So the tough of the, the toughness of the golf course is not going to affect Maverick McNeely at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he's a good play this week. I mean, he was a guy that seemed like a promising youngster then had the injury issues for yep. most last year. He's, he's finally healthy. I don't know if you caught his walk and talk um, during the players on Saturday was, was pretty good. Those walk and talks are awesome. I'm so glad they added those and they, they do them every week now. And then the other player here is uh, to reference is one of your picks, Lucas Glover, who is uh, right now down to fifty-five to one. Uh, but uh, Lucas, you know, look, he, he got really hot last year, incredibly hot uh, right around playoff time. It was uh, really something how that happened. So now he's kind mm-hmm. of uh, back to being Lucas Glover, 
but he's had a decent history here. Six top 25s overall, uh, but he's played here a lot. Uh, a matter mm-hmm. of fact, I think he's played here maybe more than anybody else that's in the field. Um, 18 appearances here, just one <laughs> top five. Uh, but anything's possible here. You could all put it together in one in one week. Why do you like him? Yeah, like you said, this is a guy that won two PGA Tour tournaments like eight months ago or whatever. Um, he hasn't had any like spike performances so far this year, but he's really playing solid golf. If you look at the ball striking stuff, like he hasn't he hasn't had a good putting week really really all year he has not had a good putting week all year that's why he hasn't you know really done better than what uh, 30th or i guess 29th is his best finish this this year but the ball striking has still been good like you said he's plenty experienced here and you know he again he he won twice less than a year ago so i'll I'll take my chances at this number in in this type of field that's true he is uh i mean again the number has come down from 90 but um it's still uh uh, a good number. And then you have the two uh, players that went uh, head to head last year. Adam Shank is 60. Taylor Moore, the defending champ is 65 to one. So uh, again, Moore's trying to do, uh, do something crazy because uh, that would just be, it, I, I must, I must say if he gets off to a good start, I might actually put some money on him. If I still, if I can get, I don't care if, if I'm getting halfway decent hedge money, because that yeah. would just freak me out if he gets off to a good start. Um, <laughs> But anyway, no top 20s this year, so that's uh, – didn't expect that. Thought Taylor Moore was going to have a nice year this year, but so far mm-hmm. hasn't happened. Maybe this is going to be something to get him going. Um, and then Shank, of course, was runner-up. He also has another top 20 uh, out of his five appearances here, coming off uh, you know, a, top, uh, a top 20 last week at Players, which is a bad. Yeah. Yeah, Shank, Shank was red hot around this time last year. I remember betting him a few times because he was playing so well. Um, not not playing as well coming into this event this year, and Taylor Moore. I mean, he's a guy who, when he does well, it's because of the putter. He can have you know excellent putting weeks. Just hasn't really had one of those all year so far, which kind of explains why he's been pretty underwhelming. Okay, uh, the next group from Todd to Victor Perez, and Victor mm-hmm. Perez is actually like Rogers. A couple of my picks this week. So you take a look at Perez. I really love the way he's trending. And uh, look, the, the way I feel, if Pavon can win on the PGA Tour, so can Perez. So I think Perez has got talent enough to do that. Uh, he's coming off a third at Puerto Rico. He was 45th last year uh, at this event. You're getting him at a big number. Uh, and uh, Patrick Rogers is one of those players that I, I, I mentioned before that I thought could break through with a win this year. And so I'm uh, not necessarily saying that this is like a great week for him, but the field uh, is uh, definitely yeah. beatable. And he's played here six times. He's missed four cuts, but he was 36 last year, which was his best showing. And he has five top 25s in eight events this year, including two top 10. So he is playing well this year, but another player that's just way overdue for a win. Yeah, I mean... Rogers is someone I'll just let beat me if he wins because yeah. I've seen that guy in contention too many times and it doesn't end well for him. Perez is a good call. I hadn't really looked at him. Um, you, you you said he finished uh, third in Puerto Rico. Yep. Yeah, cause, I mean even because I mean he finished sixteenth uh, at the Cognizant. The yep. ball striking was good. You know, fifty second in Mexico, but that was just a bad putting week. The ball striking was solid there too. Um, so don't know a ton about these guys that you know kind of split their time between the pga and dp but um 80 to 1 seems like a pretty good number for him considering how he's played these last few events yeah victor uh definitely one of these players uh, over in um the dp tour that uh had you know he kind of did what he needed to do mm-hmm. and it was time for him to move on to the u.s and he was definitely uh willing and, and capable because uh, if you take a look overall at what he did over there uh he had uh from 2022 he had two wins um including a big win at the abu dhabi hsbc that was uh, last year um and uh there were a lot of big names in that event uh that was a big one yeah in fact he had a really good showing on on uh sunday uh he shot a 66 and uh, captured that event. So he definitely knows how to win. All right. Uh, and then on this group, uh, by the way, Taylor Montgomery had a very strong showing last week, but he's been really quiet for the most part this year. Still hasn't yeah. kicked it in. Um, so it, we need more than just one week 
Uh, if, hey, look, if he shows up this week, he's never played here before and does well, then maybe we'll we'll, we'll keep an eye on him for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, th- Montgomery has turned back into Taylor Montgomery where it's just all putting. Um, there, I, I bet him <clears throat> at the Amex, I remember, because in the, at the Sony Open, he had an awesome approach week. So I was like, oh, maybe he, he you know kind of figured out the irons and if he can pair good iron play with the putting because he's always an excellent putter then we could be onto something but i'm just looking through his results and like it's just it's just all putting and i don't i don't bet on guys like that <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh that's definitely uh i mean that's if you take a look at like the top players uh, we we've been down that road before with you know the will zalatoris of the world so if, if it's not if those guys have a hard time winning then you can imagine uh, the likes yeah. of uh, players at this level. Okay, so next group, next uh, uh, group here, Daniel Berger, uh, eighty to one, um, and then we start getting into the hundred to one shots. Uh, Berger is on your list, so you got Berger. And a matter of fact, uh, I have two players on this list: Kevin Yu and mm-hmm. Sam Ryder. So we have three on this list. We'll start with Berger, who so far has been a little quiet this year. Um, missing cuts three out of five the last two matter of fact he's missed two out of three cuts here but he did have an 11th place finish in 2016 so why are you going with Berger this week yeah I mean, this, this one's honestly mostly just like a dice roll on Berger at 80 to 1 where I feel like you know if he's healthy and back in form he would be a top 10 player true in this field. Now, I, now, I, I don't think he is there's really nothing that points to him being there yet although i will say he i think he's hitting it better than the finishes suggest he actually lost five strokes putting when he missed the cut at the cognizant classic he actually gained strokes off the tee and on approach just had okay. a really bad putting week so i think he's again i don't think he's back but i think he's closer than it might appear and he's also a guy i like playing on florida courses you know he's, he's a florida state guy putts well on bermuda so you know, 80 to one burger. This, this one's really just kind of a gamble. You know, maybe, maybe he finds it this week. All right. And then, uh, Kevin, you, uh, is, uh, on the list. Matter of fact, Kevin, you, um, Kevin, you is actually, he's, he went to Arizona state, uh, where John Rom was John Rom, of course, won all sorts of, uh, records there. But Kevin, you had a, had a really good, uh, uh, nice run there at Arizona State. Matter of fact, I think he might have been a, a world amateur number one. I think. I have to check that out. But he's really starting to play well, as we know. Great start to the season. Sixth at Farmers. Third at Amex. Uh, also ninth uh, at um, uh, Pebble Beach. Uh, missed the cut here last year. Missed the cut last week. But we are getting 90 to 1. And that's yep. a big number. And again, the kid's talented. So sort of mm-hmm. like Gim, I think this week you have two guys that you're going to be hearing a lot of in the future, and we're both picking them this week, Gim and Kevin Yu. So keep an eye on these guys. And then Sam Ryder's the other one. He's trending in the right direction, back-to-back top 25s, 19th last year. And I think this uh, this this is just M.O. all the way with a player like Sam Ryder to contend this week. Yeah, playing well um, on, you know, 21st and 16th at the two Florida courses he's played at. Again, I, I kind of like leaning into that Florida form. I didn't think a lot of these courses are similar. This one's different because it's more, you know, tight and, and tree line, but I still think there's, you know, plenty of crossover where guys that have played well the past few weeks um, should have a chance to play well here. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, scroll on down because we're starting to get to some really big long shots, uh, but uh, we still have a few others. Matter of fact, um, as far as our picks are concerned, uh, you have one more player, and I have two more players. So let's uh, talk about those players, and we're going to start first of all with uh, my two. I- I'm going back with Novak again, um, <laughs> and he's 110 to one, and and Matty Schmidt is 150 to one, and I'm going with him. Nice. Jan Menson met Matty Schmidt last year when we did yeah. our preview show. Talked yep. about several uh, players that uh, rookies or, or, or young players to keep an eye on. And so I always had that in mind, but it was interesting because I think she mentioned three players. That was one of them. And that was one of the three that was, wasn't doing anything. 
But then all of a sudden, at the end of last year, Maddie Schmid started uh, to get something going, and that's when I started to pay attention because he, it, it, when he ended the year in his last seven events with five top 30s, three top fives, and a runner-up, and that was split between the DP Tour and the PGA Tour. Um, and then all of a sudden, in the last two events, 10th, and then last week, uh, got off to a really good start uh, mm -hmm. right there at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, and but you know ended up finishing 26th. So you could tell that this kid's got talent and he's starting to figure it out this year. He hasn't again end of last year. It's a, it's it's the fall. You're not a go, going up against the top players. So you knew it was going to take him a little bit more time when he's playing with the big boys now. But he's yeah. now he's back to a field that he can manage uh, coming off uh, a couple of really good weeks. So I would think Schmidt might be a very interesting play this week. Again, I think he fits yeah. the mo because he's never won before and he's 129th in the world. Yeah, and, and 150 to one. I mean, I'm a little surprised he's that high in odds after he was, you know, I think he was in the third third to last group over the weekend at the players. Like he, you know, he was in the mix there for a while. So it seems seems like a good dice roll. And then uh, your player, uh, in this way down the board. Yes, uh, is <laughs> 250 to one shot. Speaking of putting, 250 to one shot. <laughs> Johnny Vegas. You're, it's yeah. always you can always count on Jared uh, every five weeks or so to throw in Johnny Vegas. So, I mean, I I can't let DraftKings get away with two hundred fifty to one. Hundred fifty to one. I mean, one hundred fifty to one. I could have I could have passed them up. Two fifty. Disrespectful. Yeah, the, the putting is horrible. That's a concern. But you know, he, so he you know he was twenty second at waste management, which was kind of what caught my attention you know maybe because he had he had a bunch of injury issues last year um so waste management kind of looked like he was healthy again even in mexico when i, I bet him in mexico super disappointing he finished 60th he still gained 3.4 strokes on approach which is you know a pretty it was you know top 20 in, in the field that week again the, the putting was poor the driving was poor that we that week but you can usually count on vegas to gain strokes off the tee really comes down to the putter if he can just have like a decent week on the greens and th this is you know these tougher golf courses where you don't need to make a ton of birdies that those type of events tend to favor the bad putters because you can get away with just you know hitting fairway hitting green miss a 15 foot birdie putt but you know par is still a good score um so it's you know these type of tougher golf courses i like these you know really p bad putters and vegas is a really bad putter um but I, but i like him on these these type of uh these type of courses these type of, of events uh, it's it's definitely a gamble, no question about it. But two hundred fifty uh, to one, two hundred fifty to one, <laughs> you put a buck, uh, yeah. and you can't go wrong. 